Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving two functional equations, two in one. This is not a system of functional equations. We're going to be solving two separate problems, but these equations are kind of similar, at least on one side of the equation. Great. So let's start with the first one, and I'll be presenting two methods for the first one. And these functions are continuous, differentiable, reals to reals, so on and so forth. All the good properties they do have. Okay. Great. So now how do we solve this problem? Uh, I'm going to start by replacing x and y with 0 at the same time. You know, that almost all the time gives us good things if you use some special values. From here we get f of 0. Now when you replace x and y both with 0 at the same time, then you're going to get f of 0 equals 0, which is actually a very good thing while solving functional equations. So let's go ahead and save that information because uh, we're going to use that. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to keep the x free, like as x, and replace the y with 0. Now, if you do that, you're going to get something real nice. Okay, so x is going to stay as is. So I'm going to get f of x on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, y is going to be 0. So this term is going to cancel out. And y will be, y will be replaced with 0. So that's going to give me x times f of 0. Awesome. Is that good? Absolutely. We already know that f of 0 is equal to 0. Therefore, if you just replace f of 0 with 0, you're going to get f of x equals x times 0, which is 0 for all x values. Therefore, the solution to our function is basically f of x equals 0 for all real numbers. Great. So it's kind of like a constant function, or you could also call that y equals 0. It's a horizontal line. Uh, the x-axis, any, any point on the x-axis is basically going to satisfy this equation. Great. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about the second method for the first problem, and then we'll solve the second problem. Now, the second method for this function involves the following. We're going to start, actually, here's what we're going to do. We're going to reverse this process, even so that's not completely considered like an entirely different method, but it's kind of a little different because of the process we use. So don't get me wrong, they're not entirely different, they're very similar because we're just switching the order. So I'm going to replace x with, like x is going to be free, okay, so it's not x equals free, but it's more like keep the x free, don't mess with x, and then replace y with 0. Awesome. And remember, our equation was f of x plus y equals x f of y plus y f of x. And here, I want to keep the x as is and replace y with 0. So I'm going to be getting f of x equals x times f of 0. Awesome. And of course, this is going to disappear, right? Now, f of 0, we don't know what it is at this point. At least pretend that you haven't seen the first method, or even if you have seen, pretend that you don't know the value. So f of 0 is a constant. It's not a variable, right? It doesn't contain any x in it. So we basically replace it with c, right? Hopefully you see what I see. And we can write f of x as cx. Great. So is our function a linear function uh, like cx? We'll find out. That's what we're going to do next. Now, when you reverse the process, meaning that using the free x and y equals 0 first, uh, you're not completely reversing because the second step is not going to be the first step that we used before. So what are we going to do? We're going to uh, plug this in, right? So our equation was f of x plus y equals x f of y plus y f of x. And since we have an equation, we can actually plug it in, right? Therefore, it's not completely the reversal of the first method. So now if you replace f of x with cx, you're going to get on the left-hand side, c times the quantity x plus y. On the right-hand side, you're going to get x times cy plus y times cx. And that is basically cxy plus cxy, which is 2cxy. 2c or not 2c, okay, that's a good one. At least we got the c not to be, but 2cxy. Awesome. Now, uh, you can go ahead and cross out the x, uh, the c's, like divide both sides by c, but that would be completely wrong because that's only going to give you x plus y is equal to 2xy, 
which doesn't mean anything at all. We don't, we're not interested in finding x or y values because x and y are free variables. They can pretty much be whatever they want. So instead, I'm going to put everything on the same side. So n distribute this. Distrib uh, I don't have to, but let's just distribute it. I mean, I could keep it that way. And then set it equal to 0. And I've noticed that c is a common factor. Cross, mm, not cross. <laughs> Take it out. You get x plus y minus 2xy. Now, here's the critical part. The, the reason why you should not divide both sides by c, because you're not allowed to. c is 0. Why? Because for all possible values x and y, in order for this to be true, c has to be 0. But we assume that f of x in, is in the form of cx. If c is 0, that means f of x is always, always, always 0. I can't emphasize that enough. Alrighty? Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second problem. Now, our second problem is, you've probably seen this in the thumbnail, right? It is the same on the right-hand side, but different on the left-hand side. And that makes a huge, huge difference. Okay, in this case, you don't want x and y to be 0. So I have to add that condition here because I'm going to do something that involves that. You probably guessed it now. I'm going to be using division. Now, could we do this problem without division? That would be a good question, something for you to think about, and let me know if you find uh, another method for this problem. All right, so here's what I'd like to do. Since x and y cannot be 0 in this case because of the limitations, I'm going to divide both sides by divide by xy. And y, because xy is fun, right? Let's divide both sides by xy. That's going to give us something real cool. Now, when you divide, obviously, this equation is going to simplify a little bit, such as x is going to cancel out, y's are going to cancel out. We're going to end up with something like this. Let's rewrite it in a cleaner way. f of xy divided by xy equals f of x over x. I want to write the x first for some reason, alphabetical reason maybe, plus f of y over y. So what does that look like? Does that look like anything to you? If it doesn't, then I will use substitution and call this function g of x. And it's like g. Okay. If I call g of x equals f of x over x, then the left-hand side is going to be g of xy, all right? And f of y over y is just going to be g of y. And hopefully this rings a bell, doesn't it? Well, this is Cauchy's functional equation, right? Great. And we know that the solutions are logarithmic, right? So basically we can safely say that g of x can be written as k times ln x. Since I wasn't given any initial conditions, I don't know the value of k. You could also write it as a logarithm, so on and so forth. But there might be a constant there. So since g of x we already found, and we know that f of x over x is g of x, so I can replace, uh-oh, notability acting up again. So I can replace g of x with f of x over x. And we know that it's equal to k ln x. From here, we find f of x to be k times x times ln x. Obviously, this also shows you that x should never be 0 because ln 0 is not real. And this brings us to the end of the two functional equations, to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then. Be safe, take care, keep up the good work, and bye-bye.